Out of the period of the northern and southern dynasties came the Sui dynasty. A late northern dynasty, the northern Zhou, was taken over by Yang Jian, who founded the Sui dynasty in 581 CE. Yang Jian was a Buddhist from a Han lineage with much Shanbei elite intermarriage, and he served as an official in the northern Zhou kingdom. The Sui dynasty never reached the age of 40, but they unified China, started projects that would gain their greatest prominence in Tang times, and provided a model of governance that would live on to a great extent. Their capital, Chang'an, also remained the Tang capital. It's under the Sui, starting in the reign of Yang Jian, or Emperor Wen, and being carried on in earnest by his son, Emperor Yang, that construction of the Grand Canal begins. The Grand Canal connected China's two main river valleys, integrating the empire, and importantly, providing a means of accessing southern China's agricultural abundance. Emperor Wen also reformed the law codes, excising many cruel Qin-descended punishments. Having founded the Sui dynasty in 581 CE, 582 saw Emperor Wen launch a counter-offensive on the Guk Turk Empire in the north. Internal divisions among the Turks led to a dividing of their empire into the eastern and western Turks in 583. Emperor Wen wanted to reunify China to the boundaries of the earlier Han, and he turned to focusing on doing just that. In 589, Emperor Wen, using forces on land and sea, reunifies China with the conquest of the south, and his forces fought still further in the north and south. After his death in 604 CE, Yang Guang, or Emperor Yang, followed him. In part thanks to the conscription needed for fighting wars and for building projects, numerous rebellions broke out across the empire, running from 613 through 617 CE. 617 had Emperor Yang flee south, where he is murdered by Yuan Huaji, Sui official and member of the family of the former Northern Zhou dynasty. The next emperor, founder of the Tang dynasty, is Li Yuan, or Emperor Gaozu. Li Yuan was a general who'd been based out of the northwest, and after coming to an understanding with the Turks, he joined in on the rebellions. He captured Chang'an in 617 CE. He was forced from the throne by his son Li Shimin in 626 CE. Both Li Yuan as Emperor Gaozu and Li Shimin as Emperor Taizong participated directly in numerous military engagements. In contrast to later Confucian emperors who didn't see this as part of their appropriate function, these first two emperors were great military commanders. After forcing his father's abdication, Taizong went on to rule until 650 CE. Early on, the Tang dynasty weren't militarily prepared to tackle the Turks, who in fact served them several defeats. In Emperor Taizong's first year at the helm, 626 CE, the Kagan of the Eastern Turks brought his forces to 12 miles from Chang'an, and Taizong went out to give him gifts. But the Eastern Turks soon faced increased internal conflict, and heavy snows caused mass livestock loss. In 629 to 630, numerous military expeditions are sent out against the Eastern Turkic Empire. The Kagan is captured, the empire broken apart, and Taizong's authority is acknowledged by the Turkic tribes. Taizong's reign would last until 649 CE, when he dies and his son Li Zhe follows him. Before Taizong's death, in the 640s CE, Tang forces brought the Tarim Basin under Tang control, and the area came to be divided into four units with four military governors. In 645 CE, the Buddhist monk Xuanzang returned from his illegal trip to Central Asia and India with many Buddhist texts. Taizong, a Taoist, came to sympathize with Buddhism some, and Xuanzang found both Taizong and the next emperor acting as his patron. Li Zhe ruled as Emperor Gaozong, and in a morally taboo move, he kept on a concubine of his father's, Wu Zetian, as his concubine. Wu Zetian's sights were still higher, and in 655 CE, she arranged the demotion of Empress Wang, and Wu became Empress. In 657 CE, Tang China expanded greatly once again, with their forces defeating those of the Western Turks, 
and now the Western joined the Eastern in recognizing Tang authority. In 660 CE, Gao Zong suffered a stroke which left him partially paralyzed. The already powerful Empress Wu subsequently took on many aspects of rulership. And after Gao Zong dies in 683, Empress Wu places a son of hers in power before forcing him into abdicating for another of her sons, whose abdication was compelled as well. This second abdication is followed by Empress Wu taking formal rule in 690 CE and announcing the start of the Zhou Dynasty, often called the Wu Zhou for specificity's sake. This Zhou Dynasty lasted a mere 15 years before 705 CE saw Empress Wu's son, Zhang Zhang, who'd been the first of the two sons earlier forced to abdicate, take over and restore the Tang Dynasty. From 710 to 713 CE, four emperors followed him. The next emperor ruled far longer, from 713 to 756 CE. This Emperor Xuanzang, or Li Longji, seized the throne in 713 CE. Late in his reign, China's 751 CE was rather bad for them on a number of the empire's edges. Their forces lost in Korea, modern Yunnan, and most badly in the far west, where Tang China lost a major battle to the Abbasid Caliphate in modern-day Kyrgyzstan. Their allied nomadic Turks deserted to the Abbasids, and there at the River Talas in 751 CE, the Abbasid Caliphate decisively defeated the Tang forces. 755 saw disaster strike closer to home as An Lushan, a Tang general in the north, leads his forces in rebellion and captures Luyang. In 756, Emperor Xuanzang is forced to abdicate for his son, Suzang. Rebellion lived beyond An Lushan's death. He was killed by his officers in 757 CE. Suzang's reign was occupied with the rebellions, and he died in 762. It's in 763, early under the following emperor, Emperor Daizang, that the rebels are finally put an end to. The Uyghur Empire aided the Tang efforts in this repression. Despite the suppression of the rebellion, the empire was left with a gaping wound in its northwest, as by this time the Tibetans had gained control of the Tarim Basin along with its all-important trade routes. Emperor Daizang rules from 772 to 779 over a weakened empire. Daizang is followed by Emperor Dizang, who reigns from 779 to 805 CE. While the empire had started with an equal field system, where people were allocated land by the empire for farming, by now private ownership had come to dominate and the tax system changed in 780 CE from an amount of people-based system to a twice a year tax based on how much land one held. We'll close with a cursory glimmer of the last century of the Tang Dynasty. In 842, under Emperor Wu Zhang, action was taken to quell the strength of the Buddhists. Thousands of monasteries are destroyed, many Buddhist properties are confiscated, and many nuns and monks are defrocked. Institutional Buddhism would never again recover the level of power they'd reached. In the 840s, after the Kyrgyz destroyed the Uyghur Empire and the Tibetan Kingdom had fallen apart, Tang armies reasserted some control over the Tarim Basin once again. In 880 CE, the forces of Wang Chao, who'd unified the numerous bandit gangs of the Central Plains in 878, defeated Emperor Shi Zhang and subsequently laid waste to Chang'an. Huang Chao himself soon lost in battle to Li Qiang in 884 CE. Finally, in 907 CE, with the Tang Emperorship having already lost its autonomy to the eunuchs along with control over much of the empire decades ago, the Tang Dynasty formally ends with the last Tang Emperor's forced abdication by a warlord. Before this 10th century came to a close, Emperor Taizu would found the Song Empire.